Good morning, this is Dwayne, and today I'd like to take a look at major chords and what we can do with major chords to harmonize literally thousands of songs. It's much, much simpler than most people think, and I'll just walk you through it, okay? First of all, let's take a look at what the major chords are. A major chord is formed out of the first, third, and fifth of a major scale. So if a scale goes like this, and it does, that's the C scale, and we take the root, the first note, the third note, and the fifth note of that scale, that's the chord for that particular scale. That's the C major chord, okay? So we can do that to each particular scale. And the rules for a scale are whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, okay? So let's go up to the key of D then. The key of D does not go like this. Why? Because that, that the relationship of whole steps and half steps aren't the same, okay? So we have to follow that rule. Whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. So the key of D has these two black keys in it called F sharp and C sharp, okay? F sharp there and C sharp there. So when we're in the key of D, we have two sharps, okay? But that's the D major chord. That's how you figure a major chord. So let's walk through now all 12 major chords. They're very easy to remember, and this is kind of a review for you, but then I want to talk about harmonizing using those chords, okay? The uh, C chord is like that, all white, and the F chord is all white also, and the G chord is all white. So there's three chords that are all, three major chords that are all white. C, F, and G. Here they are on the left hand. C, F, and G. It, and I'll come back to that, but if we just knew those three chords, we could literally play hundreds and probably thousands of songs, okay? Those are the three primary chords in the key of C, but they're also all major chords. Now, there's three chords, <coughs> excuse me, there's three chords that uh, have a black third, a black middle note. The D chord, which is like that, the E chord, which is like that, and the A chord, like so. Okay, so there's three that have a black third, D, E, and A. And there's three that are like Oreo cookies. They're black on the outside, but they're white on the inside. D flat, E flat, and A flat. Now, if you remember, D, E, and A were white, black, white. The same letter names, but they're flat versions, D flat, E flat, and A flat are Oreo cookie chords, okay? But the same name, D, E, A, but D flat, E flat, and A flat, okay? So we've covered nine of the 12 chords already, 12 major chords already. One is all black, that's G flat. That's easy to remember, all black. And then B and B flat are different. B is white, black, black, and B flat is black, white, white. Okay, so there's three major chords that are all white. What are they? C, F, and G. There's three major chords that have a black third. D, E, and A. There's three major chords that are Oreo cookies. D flat, E flat, and A flat. There's one major chord that's all black, G flat. And then there's B and B flat. B being white, black, black. E flat, black, white, white. Okay? <clears throat> now, excuse me. Let's play that in the left hand. Three major chords that are all white. C, F, G. Three that have a black third. D, E, and A. Three that are Oreo cookies. D flat, E flat, A flat. One that's all black, G flat. And then B and B flat. All right? Let's do it with both hands now. C, F, G. G flat, B, B flat. I presume you know that, but if you don't know that, that's your first step is to learn those major chords. Now, once you know major chords, what can you do with them? Well, you, one thing you can do is turn them upside down. You don't have to play the C chord like that. You could play it upside down. Take the C off the bottom, move it up an octave, and play the same three notes, <coughs> but upside down. <coughs> that's called the C chord first inversion. I apologize for my frog this morning. We can also turn it up again a second time, and that's the C chord in second inversion, okay? It's the same chord, just upside down. 
It's like if I stood you in your head, you'd still be you, but you'd just be upside down. So we can turn chords upside down. We can also break them up. We could play one note at a time. Like so, okay? We can break chords up. And what we can do in the right hand, we can do in the left hand, can't we? We can make it into patterns if we wanted to. Listen. That's called the Alberti bass. It's a way of breaking up chords. There's lots of ways of breaking up chords, okay? And again, you can play it inverted. Okay? You can also open up, uh, play open voicing on those chords, like so. You see, instead of playing C, E, G, I'm playing G, uh, C, G, and then bringing the E up an octave higher, okay? And I can use that an eighth note pattern, or I can bring my hand over into higher uh, notes of the C chord, as long as I stay on the notes of the C chord. heard that kind of thing okay so you can turn chords upside down you can break those chords up in a variety of ways okay you can also uh, use rhythmic devices like this or there's much more complex <clears throat> there's much more complex ways of doing that but I'm just making it easy for you if you're playing for yourself, you can do this. I'm playing a C octave in the left hand, and then breaking up the C chord in the right hand. Very simple stuff, okay? And what we can do to C, we can do to F, can't we? What we can do to uh, <clears throat> F, we can do to G. flat and so on okay so we get once we know the chords we can turn them upside down or invert them and we can break them up in a variety of ways okay now another thing we can do is we can add <clears throat> a note to any one of those chords to make it a little more interesting in a pattern for example in our left hand we could go it's still the C chord but we're adding that note just it's called a six to make a rhythmic pattern something like that. In other words, we can slide out the black keys as we get to the white keys. And so it, it opens up a whole panorama of things you can do with those chords. Now, the reason you can harmonize thousands of songs with just those chords that I've talked about is because in any key that you play in, there's three main chords, three homeboy chords. Uh, they're called primary chords in music theory. In any key, they're the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. So if I'm in the key of C, my primary chords are the C chord, the F chord, and the G chord, which, as you know now, are all major chords, right? If I was in the key of D, the three primary chords would be the one chord, which is D, the four chord, which is F, and the five chord, which is A. So I could harmonize uh, a song easily just using those three chords. Now, those three chords are the basis for all blues songs. Every single blues song you've ever heard, rhythm and blues songs. It's not to say they couldn't have more chords, but most blues songs, the rhythm and blues, are based on just those three chords. Now, I could play a, a bluesy kind of thing, and you might not be able to recognize those three chords because I would put in chord substitutions and fillers and so on. In other words... I could put in in uh, 
connecting chords and so on, and so you might not recognize those. But in this basic form, the blues are just those uh, three chords. Not only that, hymns, gospel songs, uh, simple ones like Amazing Grace, you can play Amazing Grace with just those three songs. Let me show you. play it that simply I could go like a see I can add things to it to make it sound fuller but the basis are those three chords so even beginners can harmonize a song like Amazing Grace and thousands of others just using those primary chords and then when you add sevenths and sixths and all that good stuff to it uh, you come up with an amazing possibility. If you look uh, down below this YouTube video, uh, down where it has information, I will list some of those songs or, or URLs so you can go find those, uh, those songs that you can play with just three chords or four chords, okay? And I recommend you do that. Okay, that's it for today, and tomorrow we'll take up another uh, little piano tip of some sort. And uh, if you like this kind of thing, come on over to playpiano.com and sign up for our free chord newsletters. It's loaded with, they're loaded with all kinds of good information about chords. So we'll see you then. Bye bye for now.